Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at introduction to partnership liquidation. And specifically, we're going to be looking at marshalling of assets. This topic is covered in advanced accounting. It's also covered on the CPA FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you like my YouTube, please like them, share them, put them in the playlist. Let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from my lectures, it means other people might benefit as well. So share the wealth. This is my Instagram account. Please follow me on Instagram. This is my Facebook and this is my website. On my website, if you'd like to support the channel, you could always donate. It's greatly appreciated. Also on the channel, I also on the website, not the channel, I do have offers for my subscribers right now becker cpa is offering a thousand dollar off on their becker bundle the four-part cpa exam this is the gold standard in cpa preparation and you have unlimited access so if you are thinking about going for your cpa becker is the gold standard in cpa preparation now they have a thousand dollar off and you can have it as long as you need it also if you are not studying for the exam now you are still taking your college studies guess what this course will help you tremendously will supplement your college education with thousands of multiple choice questions hundreds and hundreds of hours of lectures and exercises and simulations so let's take a look at the big picture here what are we talking about we are talking about liquidation the business going out the business going out of business the partnership going out of business well basically we are terminating the partnership we're going out of business sometimes it's called it's it's called winding up the affairs Okay, so let's think about it from a logical perspective. What happened when you close the business? Well, you have to sell everything, compute your income to date. So basically, you have to sell all your non-cash asset, compute your income to date, then dis distribute or allocate, not distribute. I, I, I like to use the word allocate income or loss to the partners in the residual profit or loss ratio. This is allocating the income or the loss from step one after you compute your net income. Then you distribute the assets to creditors. Now we have to determine how are we going to distribute them to creditors because we have many types of creditors, which we would look, we will discuss shortly. Then you distribute any remaining asset to partners based on their capital balance. Here, when we distribute any remaining asset, usually that usually that asset is cash. It's based on their capital. Versus in step two, when we just when we allocate the profit or the loss, it's based on their profit and loss ratio. Well, how do we distribute the asset to creditors? We're going to be following the Uniform Partnership Act, and it's for, for short, it's called UPA. And how do we do so? Well, first, those owning to creditors other than partners. So basically, the partnership will have creditors, and the partnership might have the partners as a creditors. So first, we have to pay the creditors other than the partners. So we have to pay, first of all, let, let me just kind of give you an example. This is a partnership. And we bought from uh, Best Buy, we bought material from Best Buy, we bought material from Circuit City. So those are creditors and we borrowed money from the bank. Okay, so those are all creditors, creditor, creditor, creditor. Okay, now also partner, we have partner A, B, C and D. Now partner B also lend money to the, to the partnership. So partner B also a creditor, but first we have to pay those creditors, creditors who are outside the partnership. Okay. Obviously that makes sense because they have, if you are a partner, well, guess what? You're going to have to wait until you pay the outsiders. Then you have to pay those owing to partners other than their capital profit, their capital and profit. Then you have to pay the creditors who are your partners. Okay, so in other words, those owning to partners such as loans. So if you lend money to the partnership, then you have a priority. Okay, after the creditors outside the partnership. But this priority does not affect your capital or profit ratio. This is separate. Then those owning to partners in respect to their capital, then you have to pay them in respect to their capital and thus owning the partner in respect to their profit. Now bear in mind that three and four usually are combined. So, so basically, after we pay the, the outside creditors, the partners, creditors, or somehow satisfy them, three and four are basically combined together because what's left is basically you have to pay their capital balances. Sometimes what happens is this, the partners will have a deficit balances. That, what, is, what is a deficit balance? It means in their capital account, for example, if I'm a partner, Farhat Capital, 
I might take I might have a deficit balance of five thousand. Well, this is a deficit balance means I'm basically um um it's not only I don't have any equity. I owe the partnership five thousand dollar of equity. Why? Because over the years I either I either withdraw money or I absorb losses. Therefore, I have a deficit. If a partner has a deficit, any loan from the part that a partner can use to decrease the deficit, this is called right of deficit right of offset. So let's assume I I have a deficit. At the same time, I have a loan. I have a loan. I loan the uh, and let's keep it simple. I loan the corporation five thousand dollar. So this loan belongs to me. This is my loan. I, I, I gave them this money. So I gave them this money. So I have a receivable. So I'll have an account receivable from my end. Okay. Or not, not account notes receivable. But we're talking about the partnership account. The partnership, what, what, what we will do is we will offset this loan. We will debit the loan and credit my account to bring my account up to zero. So if I have a loan against that, if I have, if I lend money to the, uh, to the partnership and I have a deficit balance, I have the right to offset that loan against the capital. If a partner has a deficit balance that decrease the other assets access to assets. So if I have a deficit balance, guess what? If, and, and if I cannot absorb it because I don't have a loan and I don't have cash to pay because if I don't have a loan, I might have to put in some cash to reduce, to bring my capital up to zero. If I can do so, guess what? The other partners will have to absorb that deficit and we'll see how in a moment. And to make things a little bit more complicated, sometimes the partners in a partnership, they might have personal debt. In other words, they have a business debt with a partnership and personal debt. Now, what happened to the personal creditors? If you have a, if you have a, if you have a debt, but you have a personal creditors. So personal creditor of an individual partner can seek recovery of payment from personal asset of the respective partner. Of course, if, if you owe me money, I'm going to go after you personally. On top of this, in certain circumstances, I can go after the partnership asset. So it's not only I, I can recover money from you, I can recover money from the partnership. Now, now we have recognize, recognition of the rights of these two groups of creditors, means the creditors, the personal creditors and the business creditors, and the classification of asset into personal asset and partnership categories is referred to as marshalling of assets. Now here we have to determine, we're gonna have a personal asset, personal debt partnership asset partnership debt now how are we gonna how are we gonna recognize the right of each group here's what's gonna happen the order of priority of concerning the availability of assets for each group of creditors in state that have adopted the UPA we're gonna be assuming we're adopting the UPA is as follow so if you have a partnership asset if you have a partnership asset guess what first the partnership creditors have a priority that makes sense those assets are for the partnership now personal creditors that did not recover their full claim from the personal asset, okay? They can recover from the partnership asset, okay? And that's limited to the extent that the partner has a credit interest in their partnership asset. What does that mean? It means, let's assume I owe someone money, $10,000. I owe someone $10,000. This is a personal debt, personal debt. I'm also a partner. Okay, I'm partner A in a partnership, A, B, C, D. At first, the assets from this partnership will have to go to the partnership creditors. And this makes sense. We borrowed money to do business, therefore, they, they we have to pay them first. Now, if I cannot pay this personal debt, okay, if I cannot pay this personal debt, and I still have a credit balance in my account, in your forehead, I have a credit balance, that means I don't, I'm not at a deficit. Farhat capital, and I have like 3,000, I still have 3,000. Then this, this individual or this bank that I borrowed money from on a personal debt, they can go after this, they can go after the partnership because now I do have I do have a credit balance, I have, I have a credit interest. It means I'm, I am in a sense, in quote, solvent in terms of the partnership. I still I still have some equity in the partnership. Okay? And when when do we determine this? And during the final during the final distribution. Okay? So they can go after you only if you have credit. Otherwise the assets in the partnership belong to the um to the uh, debt of the partnership. Okay? Personal assets, obviously personal asset just like with, with partnership asset, personal asset belongs to personal creditors first. So personal creditors, you know, they can go after my personal assets first. 
Now, partnership creditors who are not satisfied from the partnership asset, again, that's me, but now I did not pay all my debt in the partnership. In the partnership. Now, they can made uh, such claim may be made against an individual partner regardless of whether the partner has a debit or credit interest in the partnership. They can go after me. They can go after me. But first, the priority is for the personal creditor. The best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this balance sheet and we're keeping things simple. We have, uh, for this company, we have cash of 50,000. We have liabilities for the whole company of 75,000 and we have four partners, partner A, B, Alice, Bill, Carol, and Don. Okay, notice um, Alice, Amos, or Amos, and Davis, they have a credit balance while Bill and Carol, they have a deficit balance. Notice this is a debit balance. Well, that's the first thing we need to look at. So hopefully you can read this. And notice, I mean, at the same time, I mean, in some textbook, what they do, they show the debit balance here as negative. So they show the, they show in some textbook, what they do is they show Baker negative 50,000 and Carter, uh, Carter negative well, together 50,000. So Baker negative 15. And Carter negative 35, which in turn will give you 50,000 on this side. And if you take this out, you'll give you 50,000 on this side. So sometime, but here they have the debit balance. They basically put the debit balance with the assets. That's fine. Now, what else do we have to know? We have to know what personal assets do they have, okay? Well, here's the situation. Um, Amos, they have 20,000 of assets and 50,000 of liabilities, and those are personal. So notice, in the business, Amos has 15,000 credit balance. However, on his personal, he was very, very not responsible, very not responsible, he has a lot of debt. Okay, so he has 30,000 of personal, basically net personal obligation, personal personal debt, because his assets cannot cover his liabilities. He, he's down 30,000. Okay, Bill, Bill Baker, 33,000 of assets, $30,000 of, 30,000 of debt. Well, that's good. At least he has more assets than liabilities. So he has a plus 3,000, 3,000 net. Okay, and his capital balance is deficit. Well, he is in a deficit. Okay, he's in as, as far as the partnership concern is not. It's not good. Okay, it's a debit balance. All right, Carter ninety thousand dollar in asset, thirty thousand in liabilities. Well, on a personal level, Carter is doing pretty good. Got fifty thousand dollar of assets and access to personal asset and access to personal liability. But from a business perspective, not good from a business perspective not good he has a deficit balance notice those are deficit balances don davis they have more assets than liabilities thirty thousand dollar more assets than liabilities and from a business perspective he's doing good he has a credit balance of ten thousand dollar credit balance of ten thousand dollar okay now, the first thing we have to understand that personal asset, they have to be applied first against personal liability. And hopefully this makes sense, right? Personal assets, because so Bill Baker, they have personal asset. They do have personal asset, but of that 33,000, 30,000 goes to eliminate this. So what's left is 3,000. Same thing, nine out of, out of 90,000, first we have to eliminate this debt. And what's left is 50 of the 40,000. What's left is 30. So first we have to do, we have to do so. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and look at the process in which we are going to liquidate this company. Okay, we're going to liquidate this company. All right. So the first thing is, well, what what can let's let's talk about Amos. What can Amos do? Amos cannot. Uh, well, Amos has a credit balance. Okay, so Amos has a credit balance. So we're going to wait to see what's going to happen because he he doesn't have any money. Well, he doesn't need to bring any money because he has a credit balance. Baker, Baker, he got $3,000. Okay, let's take a look. So this is the beginning balances. We have cash of 50,000, liabilities in total of 75,000. And this is the capital and loan balances, Amos, credit, debit, debit, and credit. 
Okay, so this is what we are. This is the beginning balances. The first thing we're gonna do, we said since Baker or ba Bill Baker has three thousand, Bill Baker is gonna contribute three thousand to the partnership. So what's gonna happen? We're gonna increase cash by three thousand. We're gonna increase cash by three thousand, and we're gonna reduce his balance by three thousand. So basically, if you wanna look at it from the journal entry, we debit cash three thousand. We credit Baker capital. 3,000. And what, what that did, that gave us 53,000 in cash, and Baker balance is, is now negative 12, not negative 15, negative 12. So that's all what Baker can do, okay? Now, well, if that's all what Baker can do, the next thing we're going to have to do, since we're liquidating, someone will have to absorb Baker's losses. So Baker has $12,000 of losses. Well, who's going to absorb the losses? Guess what? Amos, Carter, and Davis, A, C, and D. What does that mean? It means we're going to have the, we're going to have to take the twelve thousand, and basically those are technically losses, and we're going to allocate them equally between the between the three. Well, if we take twelve thousand, allocate it equally between the three, each individual will have to absorb three four thousand. Therefore, so so we reduce Baker by twelve thousand. Baker now is down to zero, and we're gonna and def, Baker's deficit is going to go to Amos. It's going to reduce Amos balances by four, increase Carter deficit by four, and reduce capital the capital of Davis by four. Notice the credits are capital. So what's the journal entry for this? The journal entry is we're going to credit, we're going to debit, we're going to debit Amos four thousand, the capital of Amos. We're going to debit Carter capital four thousand. Sorry, debit, debit those account. We're gonna debit Davis. Davis four thousand. And we're gonna credit Baker twelve. And here we go. Baker had a deficit of twelve. And now we credit it by twelve. Balance is zero. Baker is out of the picture. Okay, so those are capital. I'm just I'm not writing capital capital comma Amos capital capital and capital okay so now Baker is out of the picture we're done with Baker okay basically Baker out he has a zero balance and that's that okay now what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to since Baker is out now we have fifty three thousand dollar in cash now we're going to have to pay the creditors. We have $75,000. We have $75,000. Uh, we have $75,000 in, in liabilities. So what's going to happen is we're going to pay $53,000 to the creditors. Therefore, we're going to debit liabilities, whatever those liabilities are, $53,000. We're going to credit cash, $53,000. No, but notice now cash is zero. We, don't, we no longer have any cash, and the liabilities are twenty-two thousand. Okay. Now we still have a debit balance, which is Carter. Carter has a debit balance of thirty-four thousand. And by the way, just just want to let you know the reason I allocated more to Carter, more in, in other words, I increased Carter's deficit balance because I know from the get-go that Carter. Get a lot of personal asset, enough personal asset to absorb it. That's why I gave Carter four thousand dollar of that allocation from Baker. So Carter absorbed four thousand dollar four thousand dollar losses from Baker here. And the reason I did this, you might say he's already at a deficit. Why you want to increase his deficit? I know he's at deficit. I know Carter is at deficit, but I know Carter has personal asset. Now Carter is gonna come in and cover his personal asset. Uh, co cover his deficit. How much does he would he need to cover his deficit? He would need thirty nine thousand. Well, he's going to have to chip in thirty nine thousand. Why to cover his deficit to get out because he has the money. So we're going to increase cash. So we're going to debit cash. To entry debit cash thirty nine thousand. Credit capital. Carter thirty nine thousand again. Just to show you from a journal entry perspective. So Carter. Had a debit balance of 39. Now I credited his balance 39. Carter is out. Carter is out too. But good. Carter gave us some money. He's out, but at least 
he 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 uh, he was able to contribute enough money to absorb his deficit balance. Now the partnership has thirty nine thousand dollar again, but Carter is out. So notice Carter is out, Baker is out. Both of the both of them are out. Okay. Now, oh, we have money. Well, guess what? If we have money, we have to pay the creditors. Again, we're going to pay $22,000 for our creditors. Well, we're going to debit liabilities. $22,000. We're going to credit cash. $22,000. Well, liabilities are gone. We paid all our liabilities. And after we paid the $22,000, what we are left with is $17,000 cash. And notice Amos balance is 11,000 and Davis balance is 6,000 credit. Well, you got the point. Where's that 17,000 is going to go? Well, that 17,000, it's going to go toward uh, Amos and toward Davis. So who really paid this 17,000? Who paid the 17,000? Carter, because Carter paid us 39,000, 22,000 went to the loan and the 17,000 went to the other partners. Okay? So basically who paid who paid for the other two partners the cash? Carter. Carter paid. Okay? So what we do is we distribute the cash, therefore we debit Amos 11,000. His balance will debit at 11,000. We debit Davis 11,000 and we credit cash. 17,000 of six, not seven, 6,000 for Davis. We credit cash 17,000 and we're done. All notice the business is done. All the balances are zero. We no longer have cash. We no longer have liabilities. No one has capital. That's it. We're out of business. We're done. We're out of business. We're done. So notice what we started with here, the balances. And when we liquidate, all the balances will be zero. If you have any questions, any comments about this recording, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating if you're studying for your CPA exam. As always, study hard. In the next session, I would look at an example that's considered simple liquidation. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.